Hello guys, thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Indiana Sports Connection. So, what we saw yesterday in the Colts game, uh, severely disappointing. Our expectations, my expectations, tell me what you think in the comments down below, but I mean, I wasn't really thinking the Colts were like a top level team. I thought as weak as their schedule was, they might have a chance at the playoffs, but um, I'm just going to tell you in this episode that 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 is all gone. I mean, they've lost three in a row. Um, it's starting to smell a lot like last season. But we're going to talk about that, a little bit about the Hoosiers, how they played Penn State so closely, and is Penn State overrated. We're going to talk about all that and more on this episode of Indiana Sports Connection. Thank you so much for being here. Subscribe to the channel if this is your first time here. I apologize to the people on the live stream yesterday that we were chatting with because I had to, I got pulled away from the game in the last like 10 minutes of the game or so. So my apologies to you guys out there for that. We had a great time on the live stream though. Great camaraderie during the game. So this episode is brought to you by Reynolds Wrap. Reynolds Wrap has been making fine American aluminum foil for 75 years. Reynolds Wrap for all your daily game day needs. Use Reynolds Wrap to clean up faster and get back to the big game after halftime. Reynolds Wrap has so many products. Their everyday foil is in an easy closed box that's easier for you to find at the grocery store. Thank you to Reynolds Wrap for sponsoring this video. So let's get right into it. Talk about the Colts. Thank you so much for being here. As I said, subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment down below. Let's talk about Colts football. Let's talk about what we have seen out of them this past weekend playing against the New Orleans Saints. The Colts were beaten. Colts lose yesterday 38-27 to to the New Orleans Saints. And just a tough day all around for the Colts. I mean, this is the first time we really saw the defense really get uh, run over by another team. I mean, DeForest Buckner played a pretty decent game and had a sack. But overall, um, uh, the Colts are in a rebuilding mode. I mean, if they weren't in a rebuilding mode, they would have kept Gilmore and well, actually Dallas Flowers getting caught gambling. And <clears throat> that was something that Ballard really couldn't see coming. But getting rid of Gilmore at corner and then get, getting rid of um, Dallas Flowers because of his uh, gambling just really has hurt the Colts. Then we were super lucky to have Juju uh, Brents play corner, and he was a really bright spot for the Colts, and then he gets injured. And then you see we got Tony Brown out there just getting schlacked on every single play. You know, the Colts now are the team, when your team is playing bad, you want to play the Colts to get a win. And the Colts have become that team. They just are very, very limited. You can see... What's kind of crazy, I mean, early on in the game, I thought the Colts were going to win this game and had a big advantage, but you can see that everything really has to go exactly how they planned it out for them to even have a chance to win these games. And then when a couple of bad things do happen, they just aren't able to overcome those bad things. And so, I mean, it's a tough watch. Right now, it's just a tough watch. It's a tough sit, you know, three and a half hours. So thank you so much for joining me on the live stream. We had some people on there. We were talking. Uh, I really do love talking to you guys during the game. And, uh, you know, it just makes it more entertaining. But it's just tough to watch the Colts right now. And we got to be realistic. I mean, they're just very limited talent-wise. On defense, on defense, Shaq Leonard is just not rounded out into form i watched a lot of the, the plays he was in just this morning when i was getting ready to make this video he just doesn't move very fast out there a couple of times i mean uh it's like franklin was um the spy on kamara franklin doesn't franklin is a great great player for the colts i mean he's a great tackler and he's he does a lot of right things for the colts but you can see he is not a high level 
a middle linebacker to where he doesn't have the speed like what Leonard can bring to the table when he's at full strength. Franklin just lacks that kind of explosive speed that Leonard used to have. And then now Leonard, he's just not moving as fast. A few of the plays I watched him is like he got run over by the running back. I mean, he's just he's not initiating the contact. He's more like waiting for people to come at him and then he might grab them or, you know, try to pull them down in a way, but it just it doesn't look great for him out there the way he's moving around. And then our corners, I mean, our defense overall, we can't get pressure and we don't have good cover corners. So the two most important parts of the defense, I think Chris Ballard is he he spends too much time thinking about linebackers and things like that. You need high level cover guys and high level pass rushers. That's really it on defense. You need great corners. Safeties aren't as important, but lockdown corners combined with a really good pass rush is that's what the Colts need and they don't really have. I mean, that's what other defenses that are better than the Colts, that's what they're doing and the Colts are not able to do that. Um, Minshew, he's just limited. You can tell he is a career backup for good reason and it's because he can't overcome adverse things. I think we talked about this in a video last week is how players like Minshew have to play nearly on schedule at all times. Any types of penalties that put them in a deficit, like a, a second and 20 or something like that, Minshew has a very hard time overcoming those things. Let's talk about a couple of bright spots. I don't want to be so down. I love watching Josh Downs play. Downs is absolutely awesome. The Colts offense has scored enough points to win these games. Our defense is really letting us down right now because I'm not blaming Minshew and those guys totally. Minshew's playing actually out of his mind right now against the Saints have a pretty good defense. They play a lot of man coverage. The Colts scored a lot of points on them. I mean, like I said in a video this week, Tom Brady struggled mightily against these New Orleans defenses because they play a ton of man coverage. And that can be difficult uh, throwing the ball against tight man coverage. You really got to be accurate passes when they're playing tight man coverage across the board. And Josh Downs just did great work in the middle of the field getting open in this game. The other thing to talk about is the running game. The running game was absolutely spectacular. Zach Moss came in as like a bruiser. I mean, we kind of have like a thunder and lightning at running back with Taylor and Moss. I love the combination of these guys. I like watching them play together because like the plays when Moss is in there, he's a lot more of a bruiser on the ground. So a lot of good there. But what happened to Taylor in the second half? Taylor only had one carry in the second half. Was he injured? I saw him like testing his ankle a few times uh, going to the sideline and and he was like jumping up and down a few times when he was coming to the huddle what's going on with taylor we're gonna try to figure that out but we're, we're probably not gonna really hear anything about this but is he injured or is there something going on with that high ankle sprain that took so long to heal i would like to know because taylor had a really good first half and they the Colts just kind of run away from the run and I know the game kind of went awry but Minshew's let's move on to talk about this Minshew's interception in the first half was at an absolutely awful time of the game I mean it really hurt the Colts in a time when they were right in this game and just could not turn the ball over and Minshew he does this. He gets a little deer in the headlights out there and just will throw one up for grabs. And that interception um, was really tough. Rodney Thomas on the takeaway. I knew that was going to get overturned. I mean, on the live stream, now like looking back at that play, those, those plays when they're possessed by the offensive player, that was really the right call. I mean, when you're watching the game and you're in your emotions and everything, yeah, I, I didn't. 
I wanted that to go the Colts way, but um, that didn't go the Colts way. So, I mean, what are you going to do there? That was He tried his best there, take that ball away. Would have been a great play. If he could have just got it out of his hands, maybe just a smidge earlier and didn't allow him to really possess the ball. But the Colts secondary struggling, Colts defense struggling mightily. And then Taysom Hill. Let's talk a little bit about Taysom Hill because he comes into the game late on many plays. And this is one guy. And they talked about this during the game is that. Like uh, Gus Bradley said, we don't have a comp for him. We don't have a guy. We don't have a tight end we can put out there at quarterback and and have him run the ball against our defense. So Colts did an awful job preparing for him, and and it was just he's just a hard guy to prepare for. And you could see when they got the ball down around the goal line, and they brought him in on a few of those uh, concepts that they like to run with Taysom Hill. The Colts were just not able to find it. So the Colts right now are a team, when you are the Saints, and you, and the, I was watching all their podcasts last week, and man, the, the Saints, like reporters and everything, really piling on because they're three and five. You bring in Derek Carr, you think you're going to be better. You think, you know, you're in this really bad division, and they are in a bad division. But the Saints, they shirted it up against the Colts where – I was hoping that the Colts were going to be able to do that to them. But right now we're just, we're getting dogged by even the bad teams, but the teams that are just above us that are maybe ranked like 15th, 16th, 17th in the NFL, they're going to have the Colts number in a lot of these games. And that's just all there is to it. Um, We need more in the way of corners and we need more in the way of, but I think right now we're going to get a really good draft pick next year. And it's not a lost season. AR uh, will learn a lot from being on the sideline and we'll have a different team next year and see what kind of offseason moves they can make. But Kent Sterling said it. I mean, this is seven years of Ballard and we're just kind of seeing the same type of teams. And I don't want them to move on from Ballard. I don't think all of this is Ballard's fault. Although, maybe they could have educated Dallas Flowers a little bit more about not betting on teams, especially not betting on the Colts. But but some of that stuff was not his fault. You know, it's just we got to we're halfway through the season. And right now, as far as things go right now, like the Panthers game next week is a toss up. And I would say the game against the Patriots the Patriots are going to be favored over the Colts in that game. Unless the Colts can prove they can beat teams like the Patriots or the Panthers, like it's just really hard to trust what they're doing out there. And it's just going to be really difficult for them uh, going forward. And I would like to have higher expectations, but it just kind of, and I hate this saying more than anything, it is what it is the colts they are who we thought they were then that's all there is to it we thought they were gonna suck this year well guess what everybody our expectations that we really had back in like uh after the season was over last year kind of coming to be true and that ravens game is really kind of proved to be the kind of same type of fool's gold that the beating the kansas city chiefs was last year because you can see the denver broncos beat the chiefs this last week any team can do that when a team like the chiefs overlooks a team like that and maybe the ravens overlook the colts coming in with gardner Minshew and you know, the Ravens handed us that game because they turned the ball over, over and over and over again, just like what the Colts do when they lose their games. They just can't stay on schedule. So, I mean, I'm going to do more research about the Colts and what maybe if they're looking for some corners on practice squads or things like that, Tony Brown kind of feels sorry for that guy that he got picked on so terribly in the game yesterday and you know i thought the colts corners if there was any game against two wide receivers and chris olave and michael thomas that the colts could like 
really get some better defensive play out of, this was the game because these wide receivers for the Saints have just been reeling for weeks and not playing well. And we we proved that really we were the idiots uh, in this game and not them. But you know what? It is what it is right now. And I hate that saying, but it just is. Like, unless we just don't have high level players on the outside and we can't get a pass rush across. So, but Indiana against Penn state the other day, I mean, was absolutely, um, I just want to talk about this a little bit because Penn state must be way overrated because IU really should have uh, been able to take that game into overtime against Penn state. So Penn state, I'm going to look at the rankings today. They must drop, uh, a lot because IU is not very good and to play them that close on the road there bravo to IU I mean some games maybe you could say like that that loss was actually a win I'm gonna say that was a win for Indiana so let's clap it up for IU hey thank you Hoosiers <laughs> I mean you you played Penn State close enough that we can say Indiana, that was a win for you almost yeah, on Saturday. But not a lot to look forward to. Yeah, Indiana has uh, maybe some games. These last games are the ones they could win against Wisconsin. But they're just like the Colts. They got to prove it. They got to beat Wisconsin or they got to beat one of these more mediocre teams to kind of be not as bad as what we think they are. But as far as it is right now, they are who we thought they were. So until next time, stay classy out there, Colts and Hoosiers fans. And we will see you tomorrow. Talk more about the Colts. Thank you for joining me.